This is the best rice pudding that I've ever had, but it's technically risotto. Today, I'm gonna show you why and how I did that, and I'll also show you how to make this rice pudding into a comforting and surprisingly fresh dessert. To get started, I'll need a heavy bottom pot, in this case, my six and a half quart Dutch oven, and then I'll drop it over on the stove over medium high heat. Once that's hot, I'll add in a whole stick of butter, or 115 grams, and I'll let that get nice and melty. Once it's all melted, I'll add in 300 grams of arborio rice. If you didn't know, arborio is a starchy, fat, short grain rice that's usually used for risotto. When it gets cooked, it has a signature fluffy creaminess to it that I could only describe as very luxurious. It's quite special texturally too, and I think it's a lot more compelling for this dish than long grain rice like jasmine or basmati. Now, just like I would for risotto, I'm gonna fry these rice grains in the butter until they're nice and translucent. This frying builds some nice buttery, toasty flavor, of course, but more importantly, it helps keep the rice grains separate once they're cooked. That really helps prevent mushiness. Now, I'll let this fry for two to three minutes, and in the meantime, I'll get my cooking liquids hot. For that, a large saucepan goes down over medium-high heat, and into that, I'll measure 700 grams of milk, either cow or almond or cashew work fine here, or maybe even go crazy, a little oat, a little hemp, maybe some soy milk in there, whatever milk you're least offended by, basically. Then 400 grams or one whole can of heavy coconut milk. Coconut milk is not traditional for most rice puddings, but the direction that I'm going here is gonna become clear in a second and it's gonna be sick, so hang tight. I'll mention that I go for heavy coconut milk over light, mainly because it's richer and more flavorful. As you can see, this stuff is basically coconut cream and it's fully solid at room temperature. If you only have access to light coconut milk that still has some water in the bottom like this, that's no biggie. Even though it'll have a lower fat content, it's still will taste great. Now I'll also add in six grams of salt and then bring this whole thing up to a bare simmer while I check back on my rice. It's been about three minutes now. I've stirred often during that time. And as you can see, the arborio rice is nice and translucent around the edges and the butter itself is not browned, but maybe just starting to. From here, I'll add in about a fourth of the hot milk. That stuff doesn't need to be at a simmer, by the way. It just needs to be hot enough so that it doesn't stop the cooking process when I add it in. And as you can see, that came up to a boil immediately. So we're good. From here, I'm gonna stir things to get combined and I'll let this simmer over medium heat for two minutes or so, or until the rice has absorbed nearly all of the milk that I just added in. Adding the liquid in stages to the rice is just another move borrowed from the risotto playbook. It helps release more starch while keeping the interior of the grain intact. Two to three minutes later, the rice has absorbed all of the milk. I know that because the butter fat is broken a little bit and is now starting to show again on top. Now I'll give this rice a quick stir to release it from the bottom of the pot. And as this whole thing gets starchier, we're really gonna need to keep a close eye on that specifically, especially if you're using cow's milk because that's gonna combine with the starch and scorch if you don't stir it often enough. So stay frosty. Now in goes another quarter of my milk mixture or about 250 to 300 grams. And from here, I'll repeat the process same as before. Stir to combine and then let the rice absorb the milk for two, three minutes stirring every 30 seconds or so. All right, I see the butter fat on top once again and the pot is looking dry. So I'll come back and stir to release any of that rice that might be wanting to stick to the bottom. Once that's all stirred up, I'll come back with the last half of my hot milk or about 500 grams and then I'll stir it again. And from this point on, I'll be cooking this just like I would regular rice. Unlike risotto, I don't really care about an al dente center here. I prefer this rice to be fluffy and tender throughout. So two rounds of splashing in hot liquid here gives me more than enough starch development to get things to a risotto level of creaminess without having the center be crunchy. Now I'll reduce the heat to its lowest setting, set a timer for 15 minutes, and then I'll pop a lid on the pot to keep in all of that steam. While that cooks, I'll get my garnishes for this rice pudding dessert sorted out. For that, I'll drop a medium nonstick pan over medium heat, and into that I'll measure 100 grams of coconut flakes. I wanna bring a little bit of texture to this dessert to contrast the full on soft creaminess of the risotto or rice pudding. I guess it's both of those things. Anyways, these little flakes have great texture and reinforce the coconut flavor that we're already working with. To bring some nice depth to these flakes, we're gonna toast them over medium heat for two to three minutes or until they're lightly golden brown like this. Don't go much further with this on color because that's gonna darken the flavor of the whole dish and step on some of the light freshness that we're trying to achieve. The other main garnish for this dish is gonna be mango. I've got a large ripe one here and I'm just gonna dice it up. To come clean, I'm actually smashing up three of my all time favorite dishes here. Rice pudding, risotto, and mango sticky rice from Thailand. The combo of lightly sweetened coconut rice with fresh, tart, funky mango is, again, like peanut butter and jelly status in terms of classic flavor pairings. I'm cutting these mangoes into roughly one-inch size chunks, and I'll set them aside. Now, let's check back on the rice. 
It's been simmering over very low heat now for about 15 minutes and it's mostly cooked, but not all the way. It needs to steam itself to be finished. So I'll stir to make sure that nothing is stuck to the bottom. Then I'll kill all the heat, pop back on the lid and steam this rice for about 10 to 12 more minutes. 10 minutes later, when I check back, the rice has absorbed pretty much all of the milk. Arborio rice is super thirsty and will soak up any liquid that you throw at it. Before I finish this though, I wanna make sure that texturally the grains are cooked as much as I like. So I'm gonna give it a thoughtful taste and I think that's great. It's starchy and tender, but not mushy and definitely not crunchy or undercooked. Now to finish this off, I'm gonna add in 100 grams of sweetened condensed milk. Then I'll add in three grams of vanilla extract. And from here, I'll stir everything up to combine. Before I plate this though, you might've noticed that this rice pudding has thickened quite a bit. Like I said, Arborio is really starchy and thirsty and it will get thick pretty much no matter what after like five to six minutes. So to dial in the perfect texture right before I serve this, I need to add just a little bit more hot milk. In this case, I'm adding about three quarters cup or so of all coconut milk and I'll stir that to combine. And there we go. As you can see, it's perfectly saucy now and all of those little rice grains are perfectly swelled up. To plate this, I'm gonna grab a deep bowl and then I'll ladle in two to three cups of this luxurious, beautiful rice pudding. Next, I'll drizzle on three to four tablespoons of hot coconut milk. This is essential to keep things saucy in my opinion. Like I said, that rice is gonna tighten up and get thick as it sits, and this little bit of coconut milk on top is gonna keep things nice and saucy. Next, I'll drop in 10 to 15 chunks of fresh diced mango. And if you're not into mango, consider another tropical fruit that's also soft, like banana would be great, or maybe even pineapple. Now, a little chef-y touch here to dial in this mango is to hit it with a pinch of flaky salt. Just like you would for watermelon, that touch of salt is gonna bring this fruit into focus and make it taste amazing. Finally, I'll top everything with a small pinch of my lightly toasted coconut flakes. Don't go too big here. We want just enough to make things less monotonous. You guys, this dish is a study in comforting softness. The grains of rice themselves are perfectly cooked and all swollen up with milk. The sauce is very creamy, but not heavy. And there's just a little bit of tropical fruit in there to brighten things up and keep things in balance. I'm so stoked on how it turned out. And I really hope you guys try it soon. Let's eat this thing.